Hello and welcome to Kicking Tires. My name is Jimmy. And I'm Justin. And today we have a string of Toyota news. It's a, it's a Toyota day. This video is not sponsored by Toyota. Yeah, I mean, it, we had an impressive week with Toyota last week with a work of art that <laughs> just blew everyone away. And Toyota's just keeping it coming, right? And we got even more and more Toyota news. You know, they're one of the biggest manufacturers, if not the biggest. And so... Of course, we have some we have some actual news this week from Toyota, not just uh, not just bronzing it up, not just uh, plastic dipping some wheels bronze. <laughs> Although that is part of the news later. <laughs> Spoiler alert! <laughs> so one of the the biggest things that they are releasing is Corolla Cross. Um, the Corolla Cross, you may have seen it in uh, other markets, like in Asia, it's actually a decent seller, um, but it's coming to North America. So we should be seeing it sometime this year. It's based on the Corolla, as the name suggests, but it is an SUV based on the Corolla. So just think of it as a taller Corolla wagon. It slots between the CHR as well as the um, the RAV4. But we're just taking a look at the numbers before. The price difference between the CHR and the RAV4 is about $5,000, the base models. So this would probably be like just right in the middle of that, which isn't a lot let's be honest yeah i mean what what compels someone to not spend the extra three grand to get a rav4 i'm not sure uh some people might like this look this look is a little bit more rugged i i would say compared to the rav4 especially the base rav4 um i don't know i think it's the proportions just looks a little bit more uh, off-roady but there's nothing really there as far as off-road chops go. Well, it does have all-wheel drive as an option. Um, comes standard with front-wheel drive. You get the same two-liter four-cylinder that you get in the Corolla as well, um, as well as the same CVT transmission, that first physical gear and then the rest is CVT. Mm -hmm. um, so performance should be, well, slower than the Corolla, but it should return really good fuel economy, which is... I mean, the basis of why you're going with the subcompact SUV anyways. I think yeah. they're estimating 32 miles per gallon combined. Um, that's 7.4 liters for 100 kilometers for us in Canada. Right. The big thing here is that we're not getting the hybrid model of this. Mm -hmm. So in well, other markets, yet. there's a hybrid. But yeah. Not yet. Um, Toyota, when they're going through the press demonstration, they're like, we may have some big news for the Corolla Sport sometime next year. <laughs> yeah. So like they're they're already hinting that the hybrid yeah. is going to come. I mean, it's it makes engineered sense. engineered for hybrid, but there's probably a shortage and stuff. So it doesn't make sense to yeah. launch this into the biggest market, which is North America, with a hybrid option just yet. I do like um, the size. You know, I think the Corolla hatch... We were we were kind of excited that we were finally getting the Corolla hatch, right? We we had the IM before, uh, of course, and the Matrix before that. I think this generation Corolla hatch just didn't do it for me in terms of practicality. Like the back seat is so cramped, mm -hmm. uh, and the trunk is is pretty small. It's pretty um, small. Yeah, and even the Matrix was better. Like. 20 years ago and we haven't seen a Corolla that cramp for a while and that really justifies the need for a small crossover like this which is going to have a lot more space a lot better headroom um, just based on the, the profile of the car a little bit longer uh, roof design uh, not nowhere near as good looking as that Corolla hatch but just makes more sense I think for a lot of people and ultimately the Corolla hatch it's it's still just an A to B car. It's not, you know, even though you can get it with a manual and has good looking wheels, great looking front bumper and everything, it's a sporty looking car. It's not a real sports car in any sense, I would say. No, um, definitely not. It's far from that. <laughs> yeah. And so this kind of crossover makes sense. And, you know, Volkswagen's gone this way uh, as well is to phase out that hatchback and just make room for a small little SUV. Mm -hmm. And this market is growing, right? Um, the Kia Seltos, Mazda CX-30, Nissan Qashqai, the Volkswagen Taos, like it's a growing segment because everyone's kind of 
you know, going towards this route. A lot of people are stepping away from sedans and hatchbacks and into small SUVs. Um, what's kind of nice with this is this uh, little Corolla Cross can actually tow up to 1,500 pounds. I mean, it's not a lot, but 1,500 pounds is still good for like a jet ski or, you know, a ski do. Sea do? Yeah. Sea do. <laughs> maybe a motorcycle uh i mean primarily people would use it for a bright bike rack i guess if you have the tow factory trailer hitch i didn't see anything about toyota including a trailer hitch option but they usually have it as an accessory obvious and a dealer installed accessory yeah yeah 1500 pounds there wouldn't be like a brake controller or anything like that so i'm sure dealer will probably just install it i think Overall, it looks kind of funky, kind of cool. Um, has a kind of puppy dog look on the front. That's what it kind of reminds me of. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the styling. I mean, it's very much like the UX uh, from Lexus, which is not a great looking car, in my opinion. And this is just that with more cladding. <laughs> Funny that you actually mentioned the UX, because this is actually based on the same platform. Yeah. TNGAC. Um, so it's Corolla, Prius, UX, like it's all the same platform underneath. So it should ride very similar to that. Hmm. It's been a good platform. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not it's definitely, definitely nothing wrong with it, but um, definitely not as exciting as our next topic, because moving away from this, we got to talk about the Supra. Is that a Supra? Yeah, <laughs> it's a Supra. Uh, another special edition of the Supra, you know, as if we did not have enough of them. But this one's kind of nice. I mean, we've we've had the A91. Was there like a nightshade or something like that before? It was an A91 uh, special edition package. Yeah, and the gray color. And there was there's a few trims here and there already. Uh, and this is just another one to add to that list. Uh, CF edition, so really straightforward there's no guessing what that is cf carbon fiber package basically um factory carbon bits the side skirt we got what the mirrors as well no uh, mirrors is just blacked out <laughs> oh, okay so they do i i did see that toyota offers a carbon mirror which is the same as the bmw one they're super expensive i think that's why they didn't include it <laughs> uh, but the front the front air dam thing looks really good on this one i think it just needs a drop the wheel gap is insane on this car uh it just needs to be lowered a little bit and this aero kit would look amazing um so yeah it's just and then the wheels are blacked out it's the same wheels but blacked out so limited to 600 units uh only north america so yeah so yeah. it's only available in north america there's also a duck bill in the rear that is also carbon um honestly it, it really looks like the the a91 special edition um the a91 special edition came in i believe only blue maybe another color i could be wrong uh but it had a very similar looking front end um but it's a little different this one actually extends off a little bit more but the duckbill is basically the same but other than that i mean there's no power difference nothing like that it's just another exclusive model um for 2021 which is kind of weird because the gr sorry the um 891 edition was also a 2021 package it's a little bit so, late to be releasing a 2021 package yeah. but, uh, it's kind of weird just two of them i, I, I don't really like, understand why oh, but uh one thing about this car is it's like the enthusiast spec i guess and so you're getting what the free nasa not the not you don't get to go to space with this thing. <laughs> it's uh, the the National Auto Sport Association. They host some track days. They host them at um, at the Ridge too. Uh, they have some track days in the evening. Well, they do normal track days, but they do evening track days, which are kind of nice. Um, but yeah, you get a free membership and one track day with instruction, which is actually worth quite a bit. Uh, if it's if it's one on one, there's I haven't seen the details, but if it's one on one instruction, that's that's worth quite a bit. Cool. Yeah, that's really it. Moving on more to more Toyota news, the brand new well, not brand new, the updated Tacoma. 
So we get the trail edition as well as a new TRD Pro. Yeah. It is That's... new. It's a new new trim for Tacoma yeah. that we've seen on the uh, Forerunner already. We, which... we've seen the tra- I swear we saw a trail edition before. <laughs> I... uh, the trail edition is the one to get, I think, for the Forerunner as well. Just you know, you don't have to go all the way up to the TRD Pro uh, as far as the the Forerunner is set up. The Trail Edition gives you a lot of the off-road goodies for like twenty grand less than a TRD Pro, if you can even get your hands on a TRD Pro. Um, and I think it's kind of the same here. It's a, it's a good value package for people that just want to do some off-roading but don't want to spend sixty, seventy grand and off-road a sixty, seventy grand truck. Yeah, what's cool about it? Um... You get some special trails wheels. They look pretty good. You get Goodyear Wranglers on them. Um, There's also a box in the trunk, or not trunk, truck bed. Don't know why that's not letting me view it. But it's a lockable storage compartment that goes over the uh, wheel arches on the inside. So yes, the trunk bed (laughs) does get significantly smaller. but it's it's just lockable storage, which is you know kind of nice. Um, so you can put some stuff in there, and you don't have to worry about you know someone coming by and just yanking it from the truck bed itself. But it, you lose half of your bed. Like you guys need to see a picture of this. It's it's, it's very small. <laughs> <laughs> the Tacoma's got probably the worst in class bed already, but this just no gladiator's smaller. <laughs> The Gladiators is quite boxy though. Like it's, I don't know. They're about the same. They're about there, this, yeah. this one is is pretty bad with this storage box. It's nowhere near as clever as even the Ram box, which is really hidden and well integrated. The Ram box uses or, the outside, which is yeah, space that you don't use anyways. Exactly, this is it inside. makes so much more sense <laughs> to go with the Ram box. <laughs> this is uh, this is something that is often available as an aftermarket accessory but maybe not to this extent that it takes up half of your bed uh but yeah it's it severely reduces your cargo capacity uh, i, th- I think it's removable um, it has I, to be i seriously yeah. hope it is it can't be molded in there yeah um <laughs> other than that you do get a lift uh 1.1 inch front lift and um half inch rear lift the rear is with a spacer block to improve uh, approach and departure angles, but it's not like TRD Pro, right? It's not Fox Shocks or anything like that. Yeah, you get some. It's probably got some TRD tinkering, and it's a different front spring than a normal Tacoma. So, and, and you ditch the air dam, which is kind of nice because the, uh, the Tacoma air dam is massive, mm-hmm. um, and ditching that and getting the skid plates instead, which is pretty nice carryover from the TRD Pro model. Uh, I think, yeah, this really gives you off-road guys, like, it's it's a really compelling package, I think. Uh, This is the one to get. Standard rear locker and uh, the skid plates. Uh, For this, money is great, I think, if you can get your hands on one. But the most important part about this entire vehicle is the bronze. Is the bronze. They did it right with the bronze. Um, <laughs> the bronze does not nearly look like they took a regular TRD sport wheel and dipped it bronze. Um, this is actually meant to be bronze. Um, it looks yeah. more proper. It's a slightly wider wheel setup, so it's it's a half inch in terms of track, which is so insignificant. It's like putting on a not even a 10 mil spacer, like a seven mil spacer slip on and you just pushed out the wheels very slightly. Um, I think it's the same tire size as well, which has always been kind of a restriction with the Tacoma. Everyone thinks that this car or this truck it has these off-road toss, but you do need to lift it in order to put uh, a real off-road tire on it, I feel like. Um, it's you can't run that big of a size even like one size up is is gonna need some trimming and and whatnot so hopefully that 1.1 inch lift helps it as far as uh giving it clearance but i know a lot of guys with tacomas they have to do a three inch lift to put 
uh, you know, a 33 inch tire on there. Um, and I think that's really what they did with the TRD Pro because the TRD Pro has a, a one and a half inch lift on the front. So it is up a little bit more. I'm not sure if it's the same tires. TRD Pro uh, has the same size tire. I don't know. You can put an even bigger tire on it. But uh, yeah, TRD Pro gets a, a small update. A few small things updated for 2022. They call it next generation, but it's not really a next generation thing. Uh, really cool new paint job. Yeah, um, the, the electric lime also found on a Prius C. Yeah, and some Scion <laughs> products, I feel like. Yeah. Uh, uh, so we're using the paint, uh, but I don't mind it. I mean, my, my favorite has always been the Voodoo Blue. But this is a this is a close second. Yeah, I'm partial to the grays myself. Ugh, I think so they, they, yeah, there's the lunar rock, <laughs> and then uh, the the regular Tacomas have like that cement color, which is kind of nice too. Also boring. Yeah, they're a little bit boring. All my cars are gray. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't realized, no, um, your your Ford your F150 is blue. That one I didn't get to choose. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So uh, what's new here? We have some really cool bling bling um, forged aluminum control arms that are bright red. Well, yeah, they're bright red. They're, they're anodized bright red. Yeah, they look yeah. really, really cool. Um, but it's really just to help the vehicles like camber specs, essentially, just go back into spec uh, because of that one and a half inch lift. That's really why they're there. Um, they look but they, they look awesome. They look awesome. Yeah. They really do. <laughs> and I mean, control arms are not cheap. Everyone who lifts their Tacoma, you have to get uh, like the SPC control arms. They're like seven or 800 bucks for a pair. So props to TRD for developing something that looks really good. And uh, it's OEM. Mm -hmm. TRD wheels, of course, with uh, Goodyear Wrangler ATs. Um, they're your territory ATs. ATs. Um, yeah. Actually, they, they look relatively aggressive. Like the, the side profile looks really good. Um, yeah. The tread pattern itself is not as aggressive. Yeah, it's more like a like a like a just a base all terrain tire rather than like a, a full on mud terrain or anything like that. Yeah, not too aggressive there. Uh, but it should help with like your on road daily driving kind of comfort. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the biggest part about the TRD Pro is the rear three quarter, because instead of a sticker that says TRD Pro, you get a stamped TRD Pro right onto the rear three quarter. I think this is probably one of the most significant updates. Yeah. I mean, it's literally changing the stamping of the uh, the trunk bed itself. Yeah, right? quite a costly uh, update, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess there's some benefit to it that you won't scratch it off like you would a sticker, <laughs> you know, because this and, is the off-road model. So and yeah. others can't pretend that it's a TRD Pro. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, quite the flex. They can't pretend it's a 2022 TRD Pro. <laughs> yeah, stamped in badging. But um, in terms of powertrain, it's exact same. It hasn't changed. Still the three and a half liter V6, 278 horsepower, 265 pound feet of torque. You get an automatic or you can get a manual um, tow up to 6,400 pounds, I think it was. But yeah, no no actual really big changes. It's just minor upgrades um, to the product itself. But I mean, the Tacoma is selling so well. Did it really need an update? Probably not. It really didn't because yeah. there's still plenty of people that's going out and buying Tacoma brand new. For over for MSRP. For over MSRP for whatever reason. I, I don't get it. Pro. I don't get yeah. it. For it's, the same that because they're banking on it going up or at least maintaining its value. So then you have to you have to always do the math is like what am I buying it for? What will it depreciate to? And that's that's kind of the math that every TRD Pro guy does. Um but usually those types of guys don't off-road it that seriously, if I'm honest. Yeah, because they don't want to damage their investment. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, you treat it as an investment. I think you're you're a terrible person, and you're just... <laughs> that's not the spirit of this truck. Like, the, the TRD 
So Tacoma does one thing well, and <laughs> that's not the spirit of it, is not to let it just collect dust, and uh, it's not supposed to be like a garage queen. It, it's supposed to get beat up. That's, yeah. that's yeah. So if you're just buying it to, oh, this is this truck is great. It doesn't depreciate. Like, okay. Yeah. I, I remember, like, before you bought your F-150, we had a discussion about you were interested in the Tacoma. You're like, huh, maybe I should... TRD you know. off-road. I went to test drive it. I was super serious about that car. Yeah, and then you found an F-150 for, like, what's it, $10,000 less or $20,000 less? Oh, <laughs> yeah, like 20000 less. Even <laughs> after everything I've put into that F-150, I'm still less than a base, base uh, t- Tacoma. Tacoma. <laughs> yeah, and just as far as towing, like, it's it's not even comparable. Yeah, because my trailer loaded is probably about five thousand pounds, and the Tacoma is not going to be a good time for that. No, I mean it's yeah. it's rated for sixty four, but it's you don't want to be you don't want to go to sixty four hundred. There's yeah. what it can do and what it can do well. Yeah. <laughs> There's a very big what, what it can do legally and uh, yeah. <laughs> um, moving on to something that another thing that I just. It doesn't really make sense to me um, why Toyota released this. I mean, it's really just to spread that market, I think, because they have all the parts and it was cheap to do. I think that's really what it comes down to. Yeah. Um, this is the Foreigner TRD Sport. So it is one up from the SR5 and one down from the Limited. It has a limited front bumper, side skirt, and rear bumper, but the TRD off-roads hood scoop on the uh on the front there it has the same suspension setup as the limited so the xres or xreas x uh suspension system uh it has the same 20 inch wheels it uses the base sr5's uh four wheel drive system or two wheel drive if you're in the us you can still get it in two wheel drive so it's not a full-time all-wheel drive system it's a part-time with lockable is it lockable? No locks. Actually, no locks. Just a center lock, I guess. Just a center lock, yeah. But no rear locker like the um, the TRD off-roads. Yeah, the TRD off-road, the trail, the venture, the pro. Actually, there's, yeah, those ones will get the uh, locking rears. But this one, this one's more of your comfort street-oriented truck. So 20-inch wheels. So you know it's not meant to do any real off-roading but it doesn't have that full-time all-wheel drive system that the limited trim has Mm -hmm. i think the reason they did this is the foreigners kind of near the end of its life cycle they need to cover their bases (laughs) that's that's what you think (laughs) (laughs) supposedly so supposedly a new one is coming soon uh and they're just i don't want to say they're beating a dead horse because it still sells but it is slowing down a little bit, I think. Um, and so they just need to kind of keep things exciting. The biggest thing, the well, the biggest update is really that all 400 trims are finally getting LED headlights. It's, it's mind-blowing that you can spend 50, 60, 70 grand on an SUV and have halogen headlights. Um, so... Across the board, we're getting LED fog lights. We had LED fog lights before. Low beam and high beam are also LED. Um, still no power lift gate, though, which I think is a big obstacle for a lot of people because of how tall this truck is. There's a power it's window, bro. That's all you need. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty... It's still pretty old school in here. Uh, but yeah, I think a next generation truck is coming soon uh, in the next two years i think so that might be why we're seeing kind of different models to cast a wider net per se um this picture is weird so this is the picture uh that we're looking at right now it's off toyota press's website is a trd sport it says it's trd sport but i see the dial for the all-wheel drive system oh yeah looks like a rendering though did, did they just not have a TRD Sport and they shot a limited? Maybe. Toyota press team has been dropping the ball a little bit lately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
literally told me that it's five by one fourteen point three in the new GR eighty six, and then emails me twenty minutes later saying, "Nope, never mind, it's not." Yeah, uh, I'm just double checking to see if it's actually the all wheel drive system or not. Oh, cool. I just want to double check. Nope, TRD is available. Part time for drive. drive. Part time, yeah. yeah. Huh. Okay, whatever. Um, picture shows all-wheel drive, but press information shows part-time. We'll figure it out when it comes out, I guess. Um, if you see a dial, then it's the full-time all-wheel drive. Then it's literally the limited minus the leather seats and the JBL audio system. And that's it. <laughs> and the third row. Oh, yeah, the, the limited. Well, wait, can you option the limited with? Just the two row, or no, is it? It's the, it's all third row. All third. Well, at least in Canada, all limiteds are, are three rows. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, ventilated front seats too. I think that is. What? No, you can't get a ventilated front seats. The That's... limited gets ventilated front seats. Which yesterday, when I was sitting in the sun, I'm like, "That's what I'm missing," because uh, wow. my girlfriend's IS is not with us right now. And I'm like, those seats would have been awesome. And I'm just melting into Miata in under the sun with a barely working AC. Um, I wanted to be in a Toyota or Lexus product, but that was not the card that I was dealt yesterday. <laughs> Your life sounds so difficult. <laughs> the first of all problem. <laughs> oh, sorry. I have to drive a convertible in the sun. Oh, so no. My life is so difficult. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I did not know the foreigner you can get um ventilated seats. That's actually interesting. I didn't think yeah. that, you know, because the foreigner you can't even get proximity sensors or a push button start. So I didn't think that, you know, ventilated seats was anything close to something that they would have. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that's really it for Toyota News. Yeah, Let's moving move on, on to something innovative. <laughs> After talking about all these Toyotas, Ouch. Toyota does not exactly innovate uh, in this whole industry. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, Toyota. Yeah, all um, these cars that we talked about, they're all just <laughs> carryover or borrowed engineering. Yeah, um, but you know what? Every single one of those will outsell what we're going to talk about right now. Bet you that. Every single vehicle that we, other than the Supra, other than Supra, because that's the same as this, really. Corolla Cross, the Tacoma, the Foreigner will all outsell this. The new BMW i4. The new BMW i4, which is, I guess it's the Model 3 competitor, right? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm We talked about this car before. I don't know if... If this can take Model 3 market share, which I, it probably won't just because of how great their charging system and dealer network kind of is and just the, the whole hype around Tesla. But if this can legitimately be do Model 3 numbers, then it would outsell those trucks. Yeah. So with the i4, you get two options in terms of powertrain. Um, the base is the E Drive 40, and that starts at 56,000 uh, US dollars. Sorry, mm. um, that's 335 horsepower with the 81 and a half kilowatt hour battery. You're looking about 300 miles for the range. But let's be honest, uh, we're enthusiasts, which means we don't care too much about the base E Drive 40 because that's everyday consumer vehicle. Mm -hmm. We're more interested in this one. This is the i4 m50. m50 and the m50 that starts at 60 almost 67 000 um, it's a little less than the m3 so that's 536 horsepower 586 pound feet of torque zero to 60 is 3.9 seconds same kilowatt hour battery uh, but because of the dual motors and more power you get less range 240 mile range mm -hmm. but i mean that's specs whatever this car looks good. It's yeah, it's really it's that good. new BMW grill that takes up the whole front end, but it just looks it works on this this trim and yeah. it's got 
other things to distract you from the grill, right? Like we've got a fake grill off to the side and that's just kind of gives it balance that I think just styling wise and in this blue color, it's just awesome. I, yeah. I absolutely love it. When I saw the press images for this, yeah. I, I looked at this and I was like, wow, that is actually a really good looking car. And the best thing, like the initially sent out the base model uh, photos before the E-Drive 40. And that's the white one. And it was so bland. It was so just meh. Yeah. This looks so much better. But yeah. the best thing about it is the interior. And what I like about it is it looks like a regular a three BMW. Series. <laughs> it's a three series. Interior. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a great interior. <laughs> it's a usable interior. Like anyone can jump in and drive this and not have to like fiddle where are my around wind, with... where, where are my windshield wiper controls? <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, let's be honest, you know, for the average person, when they buy a brand new Tesla, they literally need a walkthrough of how to use the headlights. Your oh, it's climate like, no, no, control, no. your wipers. Yeah. Like they don't know where that information is because everything is within the like the the tablet that's in the center, right? Yes, it's nice and it's all integrated there, but it's not what like a normal car would be. You drive this, anyone can just press that start button, put it into drive and start and go and do everything that they need to do. There's nothing like too weird or outlandish about it yeah bmw's always been super functional with their interiors right like it's always been very simple timeless style i think like even if you go back 20 30 years a bmw interior doesn't look dated ever mm -hmm. um and even like i drive we thought it would be like terrible when it gets old i think i drive has held up as far oh. as infotainment so well. systems i drive even when you go 10 years back is still fairly usable because they have a good mix of hard buttons yeah and that's the thing when you're full software based or full touchscreen base and your hardware falls back if you don't have those hard buttons and touch points to bring that car up um i think it's not going to age as well mm -hmm. Yeah. And the range on this one, so the M model has the dual motor or uh, whatever you call it with the all-wheel drive, and it does dual hurt motor. the range a bit, but it still gets basically 400 kilometers of range. So it's still a lot of range. It's um, more than enough. I mean, yeah. considering like first-gen Nissan Leaf had literally 100 kilometers and people were okay with that, mm. you're fine at 400. <laughs> yeah, and what that what that tells us, or or I guess the, the takeaway too, is that the regular one, you're getting 500 kilometers of range, basically. <laughs> uh, the regular rear-wheel drive model. And, you know, so many people are making rear-wheel drive work for them. I love it because the Model 3, uh, the base model, SR, SR plus, I guess it's called, mm -hmm. um, the rear wheel drive. It's, it's enough for a lot of people just get winter tires. Like it's not, it's not that difficult. And where do you get winter tires from actually, Justin? Hmm, I wonder the show sponsor overdrive auto tuning, <laughs> but wait till rebate season. That, that is my pro tip. And then you can message me and I'll get you good deals on winter tires. Um, but yeah, the the standard trim is not half bad. That's a lot of range, and mm -hmm. it's a handsome looking car. Uh, and then yeah, the M fifty spend, spend the does... extra money. Spend the extra money. It's I worth think so. it. For you're, the you're spending you're spending <laughs> this much anyways, and just the performance is is it's sub it's... four seconds zero to six here. It's faster than the Supra. <laughs> <laughs> you you Let's... get a base. Tesla, you may get beaten by a Supra. Just saying. <laughs> not not referencing anything, but a regular trim Tesla, you may lose to a Supra. But I think I4 M50, you can take a Supra. You can take a Supra. Yeah. And I, okay, let's be honest. At ten thousand dollars more, because that's really what it is, comparing to the E Drive 40, then the M50 version mm. is ten thousand dollars more. You're not buying this car. People aren't buying brand new BMW i4s. You're most likely leasing it. You're leasing it for your four years, three years, whatever it be. Mm -hmm. That $10,000 is not that much. It's 150 bucks a month, maybe. Yeah. yeah, it's not that much. So you know what? I think it's worth it. If you're already spending 60K, 
spend a little bit more I get think the m50 right. it looks better it has much better in terms of performance so that way you know your next door neighbor with his tesla model 3 won't be like hey my car is faster than yours yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i mean with the three series i'm a little bit I take a different approach to that. Like I think the 330i, that's all the performance you need. And the 340i, it is faster, better looking and everything, but it, it's quite a jump, I feel like. Uh, but in this case, we're talking about rear wheel drive versus X drive, five, almost six seconds to sub four seconds. Um, so yeah, it's a huge difference in terms yeah. of performance. It's not, that's the beauty of electric cars. Like the performance, jump is, is is so much and you can get so much out of these you can't you can't shave two seconds of zero to 60 off of a gasoline car for 10 grand no <laughs> yeah um more electric news from bmw is the ix so the ix is their suv of electric vehicles um it's about the same size as a x5 so if you're thinking roughly how big it is, it's about the X5 size. It is a two-passenger SUV, uh, but it's priced a little bit higher than the X5. It's more closer to the X7 in terms of pricing. But here's the specs that you need to know. The base model is going to be an X-Drive 50. There may be an X-Drive 60 that's going to be coming out in the future. Actually, sorry, they call, they call it the M60, not X-Drive 60. Mm. Um, but they're all all-wheel drive. 516 horsepower is what you cut, uh, you get base. It is a 105 kilowatt hour battery, but still because of the weight and everything, you're still looking at about 300 mile range, zero to 60, 4.6 seconds, more than, you know, enough in terms of, you know, actual speed. But the, the looks of this is uh, quite unique. Unique in the sense that I don't, think it looks like a bmw that much like if you block out the grill i think and, and obviously it has the kink in the rear window but so does a chevy bolt right <laughs> like and every other nissan and, and uh, yeah the floating roof like it's it's just it's done before so many times and this does it doesn't scream bmw to me which i think is a missed opportunity there like this is your breakthrough ev suv product it should you know, it should have more brand identity there. Yeah. Aside from just the massive grills. Like, so this, the IX is going to be, it should be more important than the I4 that we just talked about because SUVs are going to take over, right? Um, this is the brand's first full electric SUV. So it's a huge leap. The outside, yeah, I'm, I'm still kind of conflicted. I'm not too sure how I feel about it, but the inside... Inside looks amazing. Yeah, I love the fabric and the, the textures that they've done. And it's just, it's stylish. And I think there was a picture of uh, just kind of what they base it on is, which is like a very modern and contemporary interior design, like, a, like you know, what you would put in your, your, your condo. Uh, and they've kind of integrated that into this. I think a lot of designers could learn from this. A lot of companies make uh, interior that is just, kind of you know very ro robotic in a sense that this this interior to me feels uh more at home for lack of a better term mm -hmm. and yeah. you were mentioning before the show we, we're looking at this um you can get it of kind of two different types of interiors um the leather and, or it's probably a vegan interior but you can also get this like cloth like interior which looks really really cool yeah, I'm not a big fan of their diamond stitch quilting that they've done on it. Like, it looks like a mattress to me. <laughs> but <laughs> I was thinking but paper the, towel. But yeah, it's it's not the best uh, diamond stitching we've seen out there. But BMW is probably leaving that up to Rolls Royce. But uh, yeah, that's definitely vegan leather because the leather has an embossed mm, like a little soybean thing on there. <laughs> um. But yeah, the, the fabric interior is awesome. And just how the materials play into the shape with the diagonal slashes across the interior, I think it's awesome. Uh, Interior-wise, I think I, I do enjoy this car. And because this is uh, 
it's got it's got maybe less conventional of an interior than the uh than the, the i4, i4. That we just yeah yeah it's definitely different um the steering wheel is yeah. also like a square <laughs> yes it, it's and that's kind of one square. one thing we're seeing with electric cars is that they're not going with as conventional of a steering wheel design i like the iDrive how it's integrated into the wood trim yeah too. that was really like, nice that is that is something you might see on like a high end you know, hi-fi system or something like some interior uh, accessories that like, I mean, home interior stuff, that, mm-hmm. you know, a nice Bluetooth speaker with integrated, you know, LED lighting and controls. I think this is pretty neat, but yeah, in terms of styling, it doesn't look anywhere near as good as an X5 mm-hmm. in my opinion, at least. Whereas the, the I4 looks as good maybe as a three series. I, I I like the M340 a lot, so maybe I'm a little bit biased there. But I think for most people, it it looks it looks pretty good. But the i ix maybe it's called the i10 because BMW always has a number after the, the letter. Right? Mm. So maybe maybe that X is a is a ten. It's a ten. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. You know what? I just also noticed. I was looking through these pictures and I saw that they have all their electric cars in a row. I completely forgot about the X3 EV. That's their first full electric SUV. This is actually their second. <laughs> I completely ah. forgot about it because we don't get it here. Oh, yeah, true. Because Mercedes did something similar with their... Yeah, their uh, GLC, which yeah. we also don't get here. So, like, it's super forgettable. What do they call their... What does, what does Mercedes call their electric cars? It's like... Uh, EQC. EQ, yeah. EQ everything. And then... Yeah. Yeah, no, this one, this one to me has a little bit of a a knockoff look to it. Mm. <laughs> For, yeah, like look at that. That X3 is instantly recognizable as a BMW. This to me looks like it's almost like if you told someone what the car would be and then they developed it in a game, like in Grand Theft Auto kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> or. Yeah, if you ask like your your motor trend or your car driver and you ask your audience to design the next BMW SUV, like it's not done by the same designers, it feels mm-hmm. like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the coolest fact of both of these BMW vehicles is what's underneath that badge on the front. Um, both of them can lift up and that's where you put your windshield washer fluid. I don't know why I think that's super cool. Um, I saw it in the press photos yeah. and I was like, oh, that's unique. That's cool. <laughs> that's unique. And then it just makes, uh, you know, reduce, reuse, recycling that much easier. If it's a rainy day and your your washer fluid <laughs> light is on, <laughs> just, just funnel just it in. Pop just it funnel open. It. You don't even need to pop your hood. Just, <laughs> just pop, your, uh, pop your badge a little bit. <laughs> Uh, that's really it about the BMWs and the news this week. I think it's time to move on to the the car of the week. Uh, just this week, released the review for the brand new Kia Sorento. So the Sorento is the second largest SUV that Kia makes, the biggest being the Telluride. But this is still a three-row SUV. It's based with the uh, same as the uh, Hyundai Santa Fe. But a Santa Fe is only two rows. This is three. So, yes, the third row is actually quite tight, and you're not going to be super comfortable in the back. But I think it looks cool-ish. Like- it looks so good, but then it's got the same issue that I have with the iX, which is it doesn't look instantly recognizable as Kia, especially the rear taillight design, how it's split up into two vertical slabs like that. It doesn't look like a Kia uh, I think I mentioned it to you before when I first saw this car on the road. I'm like, that looks like a Chinese car from behind. It doesn't look like a Kia to me. Yeah, so Kia doesn't have that brand identity like a lot of other manufacturers do. Mm-hmm. Like, Just their grill, basically. They All they have is really the Tiger Nose grill, as well as on the top of the glass. Um, they have this indent that's in the middle, which is the the only two things that you can really tell that it's a Kia product, but they're so subtle, right? The grill being a tiger nose grill, it just means that the middle is squished in. That's really all it is. There isn't a huge difference to it compared to like, you know, if you look at Audi, 
I mean, Audi's probably the worst offender for this, but yeah, Audi literally looks the same every single kit vehicle that they have. Mm-hmm. Mercedes right. all look the same yeah. as well. I saw an S class the other day. I had to get way up close to see if that was an S, an E, or a C. <laughs> it's 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 impossible to tell anymore, especially at a thing, distance. Yeah, this thing doesn't look anything like its predecessor. Um, you know, which, which is good. Was, up until a few years ago, that's the biggest car they made. Yeah, and then, the, but the old Sorento was kind of boring, right? This one's a uh, a lot more exciting. Yeah, a lot more upscale. Like the interior yeah. is is not. Um, I mean, what's its direct competitor aside from the Santa Fe? So, uh, CX9, uh, Highlander, Explorer, Explorer, yeah, Pilot, yeah. Th- this feels like a step up, especially from like an Explorer or a Pilot. Uh, and how's it priced? I mean, Kia is always about the pricing. Yeah, pricing is actually pretty good. Um, so here in Canada. The Sorento is starts at thirty four thousand. The SX that we have here is fifty eight or forty seven. Sorry, not fifty eight. Hmm. <laughs> oh, I noticed something. Kia. This has the old Kia badge. Yes, it hasn't updated to the new Kia badge just yet. Oh, yeah, the the K five gets a new one. No, the key fi- no. K five was still the old one. The only Kia that's selling right now that has a new Kia badge is the Stinger. Oh, okay. And the carnival, sorry, the carnival as well. But that's it. Everyone else gets the uh, the old Kia badge. Wow, this thing starts at thirty four. Like that's a lot of car for the money. That is, if you're getting a Rav four for thirty four, you're getting hubcaps. <laughs> let alone the lack of let, let alone the lack of a third row, and it doesn't yeah. look this good either. Um, well, you get the very similar engine to the Rav four though. It's still a two and a half liter four cylinder, non turbocharged as base. It makes 191 horsepower, and for the weight of the vehicle, it's kind of meh. You kind of want to step up the turbo motor, which gets you 281 horsepower and 311 pound-feet of torque. Yeah. But the only thing is, like, I did an acceleration test just on the side of the road. It was pretty slow. Like, it didn't feel like 311 pound-feet of torque. Like, in the Mm. CX-9, CX-9 has 310 pound-feet of torque. When you floor it in that, you actually get pushed back in your seat. Yeah. This didn't. This just felt like a Highlander hybrid moving along. Mm. So that's the only thing. Like, it just didn't feel as fast. I don't have, like, complicated testing equipment to see exactly what the, you know, 30 to 70 miles per hour kind of thing is or anything like that. But it just didn't feel as quick in terms of acceleration. Ah, Fair enough. But I think, yeah, for mid-trim low forty thousand dollar suv i think this is awesome like it just it looks really good inside and out mm-hmm. um and what five year warranty five year in the in canada and 10 years in the u.s that is really a compelling product you, you can't beat that you really can't yeah and that's kind of, you know, the warranty is important right about now, right? Like, as we talked about a few weeks back, Hyundai Kia facing a lot of recall and bad <laughs> news there. Um, bad recall news, but gives you a bit of confidence with this product, right? So, yeah, yeah I think I think that's nice. It doesn't really have a direct competitor, does it? Oh, yeah, Equinox, or not, not the Equinox. What's the one above the Equinox? Traverse. 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 Traverse is bigger now. The only one that's uh, really about the same size is a CX-9 right now. Because mm. um, even like Highlander, Pilot, they're a little bit bigger. So it's more yeah. tell you a, a more usable third row. Yeah. Yeah. But this is designed to be a two-row SUV. And it's has a five a third... plus two. Exactly. Yeah. Having that third row, it's like, hey, just in case if you do need to carry two more people but definitely not for longer journeys. Because if you were to go for a longer journey, behind that third road, there isn't enough space to carry all your luggage anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like all Hyundai and Kia products, you got a bunch of tech, like panoramic sunroof, heated, cooled seats, a really, really good adaptive cruise control. Like everything that you need in terms of like tech is there. And that's one of the best parts about a lot of the Korean products. It's they just fill it with tech. Yes, 
and 11 liters per hundred K. That's not half bad for the size and power. No. Yeah. But I think that's about it. That's all we got this week. Anything else you want to add? Nope. I think that is good. Perfect. Well, thank you everyone for watching or listening in. Uh, and we'll see you again next week for some more automotive news. Take care, everyone. Bye now.